So welcome everybody. So this is our pack team. We're gonna try to do these, I'm Amanda Bulgarelli, and we're gonna try to do these meetings virtually every day at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna go YouTube and Facebook, a little bit of both so that everybody can see us here. And all we wanna do in these crazy times is deliver a little bit of the content that we often get to deliver and haven't been able to for a while. So we're getting stir crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and deliver a little bit of our content out there. So I'm gonna share screen and we are gonna start this thing rolling. All right. So what we have found in these crazy times is that even though social isolation should make things easier to talk because you're spending so much time together, when there's dementia or stress or something else, um, anxiety, other brain changes causes us to actually have a harder time with words. So we're gonna watch just a moment, a video of Tifa uh, called How Dementia Affects Language Skills, which you can find on YouTube for free. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of check in with her and then we're gonna do a little bit of content with our team. Here. I'm gonna pause sharing because I am going to reshare screen where you can hear it hopefully this time around. All right, let's try it again. There you go. And they have this whole set of skills, put this hand up, which is strong, powerful. Oops. And they have this whole set of skills, put this hand up, which is strong, powerful, and retained on the right. So let me tell you what's over there. These are all rhythm-related skills with one exception. It's special. So you have language and you have rhythm. So let me help you hold on to it. We'll look at it in a second so you see it. Okay, here we go. Put your hands up. The heels of your hands are gonna hit your temporal lobes to help you remember this. And you're gonna go left, right, like you're marching. Left, right, do it again. Left, right, good. Language on the left, rhythm on the right. Now, I want you to look at me while you do it first. Okay, you ready? Formal and straight up. Language on the left, rhythm on the right. Now, you need to kick that hit. You need to get a little rhythm action going there. Because I want you to have a full body memory cue of what they keep and what they lose. And I want you to hang on to it. Now this is simplified, but it's the basics of what they keep. And it's the basics of where things are. It's complicated, but I don't wanna make it too hard for you. So what do we have over here? Language on the left, rhythm on the right. Now you lose on the left, retain on the right. You lose on the left, retain on the right. Okay, so we are gonna move now into our video panel here so we can see our team. And team, feel free to unmute when you think you know. We're gonna fill this chart in. So what we're seeing here are two brains, um, both autopsy brains. The top brain here is a gentleman who died in an accident, so a fairly healthy brain. And the brain down here, uh, we're looking at a slice. If you can take your fingers kind of right above your ears, we're looking at a slice, like a slice of bread of that brain. And the white that we see is the wiring and the dark edges, that's the gray matter. Those are those storage cabinets. Down here in the blue, you see the right temporal lobe. So that's rhythm. And down here in the green is the left temporal lobe. So that's language. So I'm gonna go ahead and see, let's see what you guys come up with. Let's try to fill in the blanks for this group. So feel free to unmute and tell me what to place. Is that speech. rhythmic speech? Yeah. Uh, comprehension on the left.
So, so, social, social chit chat on the right. That's number two. Catherine is, is showing a little rigidity. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be right, Chief. I gotta get it right. Okay, I'm not so sure. Why don't I go ahead and fill in number one? Forbidden well, words. Oh, crap. I'm being rigid. <laughs> <laughs> really and truly, there's no rule about the order. I just do them that way because it's easier for me to remember them. <laughs> That's my favorite. Poetry. And prayer on the right. Music, poetry, and prayer. Music, poetry, prayer, and counting. Music, poetry, prayer, and counting. Automatic movements. And the rhythm of speech. And left is vocabulary. And three is speech production. Speech production. And geez, I think the sexual, sexual, um, comes in there somewhere on the right. Hmm. That's under forbidden words. Aha, yeah, forbidden words. Um, we can add to this one here, forbidden words, so that people know what's over there. It's a special one, not necessarily related to rhythm, but those forbidden words, we've got sex talk, swear words, Ugly phrases. Ugly words. Ugly Racial words. slurs. Racial slurs. This is a lovely thing. However, why is it considered a gift? Why does Pat consider this a gift to keep these forbidden words? It's our clues. It's our clues to know how someone may be feeling if we've scared them or startled them. Letting you know something's not working. So if my language center isn't really working well, I'm not able to think through the things to say exactly what I want to say. Wow, you know what? That was a little bit quicker than I wanted you to come into my space. Would you mind backing back out and try again? Instead, I might say, get the hell out of here. But it's what I've got. And so we see it as a gift because, hey, I'm telling you something. It may not be how you want to hear it. Cool. So this is our formal language side. I think somebody said it. I just didn't quite catch it. Our left temporal is our formal language. Our right temporal is our rhythmic speech. So these are the gifts that are preserved. And these are the um, skills, those three skills on the left side that we're losing when it comes to dementia. So notice even here, after 10 years of living with Alzheimer's, this brain, we actually still have a decent amount of storage and more wiring on the right side, the right temporal lobe to the rest of the brain than on the left temporal lobe. Hey, Amanda. Yeah. We've got a question on YouTube. Too. Awesome. Um, Somebody's asking, does the repeating over and over relate to the rhythm on the right side of the brain? Oh, great question. So we're thinking about um, a repeated full set of questions. So the same question repeated could be a rhythm or it could be a sound repeated. Help, help, help me, help, help, help me, help, help, help me. So if it's more of the rhythm of speech that I'm liking, we're probably connected here. If it's more of, I've asked you the same question, I've told you the same story, I've gone through the same content, but it's a bit longer than, oops, than what we might be talking about is actually a different part of the brain. And we'll talk about that on another day more specifically, but it's called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus, I'm doing this because this is how we represent our 
limbic system, our primitive brain, and the hippocampus is in charge of remembering things and keeping up with the passage of time. And so I don't actually know that I've just asked you that question. It feels like it's been hours since I've talked to anybody or anything, or it feels like we just did that. We just did the thing. And so that keeping up with the passage of time, the hippocampus, much like the left temporal lobe, shifts pretty significantly and fairly early in many dementias. So it might be related. It might be related to another part, but what's true about all dementias is that at least two parts of the brain are dying. So the likelihood that we're gonna see the left temporal lobe and the hippocampus changes early on, pretty good. Those are two early affected areas in many dimensions. Great question. Affected, 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 it's affected. It's all affected, it's affected. The other kind of rhythm pattern um, that Manda was talking about and she didn't say specifically, so I will, is echolalia. Um, and we see it in autism where people pick up a phrase or a word and they do it over and over and over again. So something they hear or get once they hear it or get it and it gets in, it's sort of like in an echo chamber and they do it over and over and it can morph or change. So I could, I could have heard, would you like something to eat? And somebody yells out, I'd like a cookie and I'll go cook, 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 cookie, 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 cookie. And somebody might say to me, Tipe, I didn't ask you, you're diabetic. You're not allowed to have cookies. So the question is, am I asking for a cookie, which I might be, or am I simply echoing what I heard that stuck in my head? And I don't even, so that particularly, if somebody offers me a cookie and I, I knock the cookie out of their hand, people would perceive it as being an aggressive behavior when really all I'm doing is, I never asked for the cookie in the first place. I was making a, a pleasant sound to myself and I, wasn't asking anything from you, actually, just so you know. <laughs> Great. So um, I noticed in our chat that we also had a, a quick question about or a quick add on to what um, we were talking about earlier. It may not be that somebody isn't understanding you or hearing you. Um, I'm sorry, they may not be understanding you and it feels like they're not hearing you because you hear the words, huh, or what? So Jess, did you wanna talk a little bit about where you were going with that change that we might notice on the outside that we might misunderstand? Sure. So early in this, people will miss out of four. How before you get, do you think? Early in this, people will miss out of four. How before you get, do you think? No, still no. <laughs> and so what I actually did was something we've often heard Tipa do, just take out every fourth word. And a common reaction is a huh, or that sort of vacant look, which sometimes we, might mistake for they didn't hear me. And so what did you notice me doing to try to compensate? I got louder. I got louder. Now, is that something you've ever seen happen in a dementia care setting? Okay. Um, so did it help when I got louder? Not at all. Not in the least. And why is that exactly? Because oh, yeah. I'm not deaf. <laughs> yeah, I'm not deaf. I just. Oh, it I'm wasn't not... actually a hearing issue. It was a what type of issue? Comprehension. Comprehension. Yeah. And so huh, I kind of thought that it was funny when we initially couldn't hear Tifa at all. And we had to go back and actually turn on the sound because commonly in these dementia care settings, when our message isn't getting through, we have a reaction of getting louder, which can sound harsher and more angry. Thank you, Tifa. Um, when, ooh, that may not be the issue at all. Instead, it may be more of what we're looking at here, 
with a lack of comprehension. Yeah, so thanks, Jess. So we have a lot of solutions that don't always work when somebody is not understanding or comprehending what we're saying, or they're having trouble producing the words that we're looking for. So one thing that I wanted to show is, okay, what does PAC recommend now? Uh, let me get rid of the annotation real quick. Maybe, maybe not. Um, so what does PAC recommend us do? So I, I'm not gonna play um, much of this video because you can go check it out yourself. Connecting Through Music is the title of it and it will walk you through, TIPA walks you through lots of different ways to use music to connect. And if I can trigger, so let me go back one more slide. If I can use what's left here, what remains in the right temporal lobe using music, poetry, prayer, counting, any of those things that we talked about, then suddenly I can get your whole brain to start to engage and actually free up words in that left temporal lobe that you weren't able to access before. Because what do you notice is one of the biggest missing pieces down here in this brain? Is it the storage cabinets or is it the wiring to get there? All that wiring. Yeah, so by using music, we can connect to the rest of the brain a little bit more effectively. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining. Here's another look at our PAC team. We've got um, quite a few people on. They just came to say hi and help us out as we try to get more and more awareness out there of what is dementia and how can we help. So thanks, I'm gonna...